Hello and welcome to Azure Terraformer. Last episode, we set up our build validation pipeline that ran Terraform plan anytime we submitted a pull request. This episode, we're going to kind of finish things up here by tying up loose ends and applying some basic branch policy to ensure that we have the right people looking at it and the right number of people looking at it. So without further ado, let's get started. I am going to go check out the documentation again to go look and see what options I have on the table here. Um, I do have, I, I kind of have an idea of what I'm looking for. It's all related to branch policy. And so I can see a bunch of resources just filtering here. Auto, auto approve, auto reviewers. Um, we, we've already used one, which is the build validation. So that's in order to merge into that branch, you have to have a, a build that validates the feature branch that you're going to merge in. Comment resolution would be a good one. Merge types would be a nice one. Min number of reviewers is definitely one that I want to use. And then uh, work, work item linking. This is, of course, when I'm managing my backlog using Azure DevOps. I, uh, I, I want to have all of my pull requests that I submit linked to particular work items on the backlog so that I can associate to user stories and kind of integrate with my agile um, my agile project management process. So anyways, let's get to the setting the auto reviewers. So this is going to be the users that I want to automatically review any code changes, um, submitted on the, on these pull requests. So these are going to be senior engineers that are responsible for do, conducting code reviews when pull requests are submitted within the team. So we can see here that we're using this Azure DevOps user entitlement, um, which is probably something that I'm going to have to do. Um, and then we have this auto approvers, which links the entitlements to a particular repository ID. So why don't I just grab this example and let me drop this into a branch policy. And so right here, the entitlements I'm going to have to fix this. I mean, this is just nasty. It's, it's, it's hard coded to a specific user. Um, what, what should really make sense here is I should probably pass in the principles that I want on the, you know, on the team or to be reviewers and then create entitlements for each of those people. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to create a new variable and we're just going to call this variable. Uh, what, what should we call this? Now this should not be sensitive or controversial in by any of the stretch of the imagination, uh, I'm mainly because I'm the only person on the team. Uh, so I'm just going to add myself on that list and, uh, I'm going to show up as a default reviewer for this repo. Makes sense. Um, however, I will probably run into problems if I, when I set the min number of reviewers to be two, um, or even one, because then. Uh, it actually requires somebody other than myself to approve it. So I'm going to need, I'm going to need a little help. Um, if I, if I enact that policy. So for right now, we're just, I think we should be fine just setting default reviewers to be uh, a collection of me. Um, and then we will go set up the entitlements to pull in those re those reviewers. So let me go to branch policy and I'm going to use the count meta operator or meta argument to drive off the length of var dot default reviewers. There we go. Now the principal name is going to be the item in that collection. And so now this auto, this auto reviewers block is going to use, um, basically a collection of the auto reviewer IDs. Now these are going to be, um, user IDs pulled from this user entitlement. So how do I do this? So this is expecting an array, but the example gives us, uh, some syntax where they're declaring, Hey, there's an array and I'm going to explicitly define the items in this array. Um, but what if I already have an array? Um, for example, when I use the count meta operator or meta argument, when I use the count meta argument, basically this resource block becomes an array. And I can access attributes off this, 
off this resource you, and, and they become arrays. How do I do that? Well, the syntax that I need to do this is by chain, obviously, you know, example doesn't make sense, reviewers, but here's where it gets interesting. So normally if this was a single item, I'd go reviewers.id, but reviewers has the count meta argument on it. So if I use star and then .id, this is actually gonna produce an array that contains the IDs, which is exactly what this property needs. So if I, if I embed this inside an array, the, the square brackets, basically I'm saying, all right, I'm going to have an array. And the first item in that array is going to be this array of IDs. That's not what I want. I actually want just the array of IDs. So I need to break this out of the array syntax here and just drop the reference to my uh, user entitlement collection. Um, and the ID, the IDs that are output from that. And that's pretty much it. So I'll change this from auto reviewer to required reviewer, and then I'll change my path filter. Um, now I might get super sophisticated and if I've got te a team where there's certain people that are only gonna be looking at certain types of code, then I can go nuts here and really, really lock this down, but it really doesn't matter at this point. And so now the scope, Really, I, I, I don't need to tie it to anything. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna default to a match type of the default branch. And this is gonna pretty much give me what, what I need. Um, of course, blocking and set to true is going to mean this thing is gonna uh, not allow me to merge unless that's there and unless some approver happens. Um, submitter can vote means if I'm the one submitting this pull request, then I don't count in this. Um, so I think I want to set this to true because I'm literally the only person using this and we're going to have problems um, if I don't do this. So it uh, makes a lot of sense. And then I think there is another attribute called minimum number of re reviewers, which I think we should probably set that as a var which hasn't been declared yet. I'm just going to set it minimum number of reviewers. And then in my variables, I'm going to define. And I feel I'm pretty good about this. So let's, uh, let's apply this and see what happens. So let's go out to Azure DevOps and see what's out there. So we're in episode 44 now. So let's check this out. I've got pipelines, which we set up last, last episode. I've got my infrastructure repo with all the things. Um, I can go look at my branches and I can go check the branch policies. So automatically included reviewers. This is the policy that we set. We didn't actually set require minimum number of reviewers. We set a automatically included reviewers setting, which does set my, so here's me in there and then I'm, this is required. And then it does allow requesters to prove their, approve their own changes. So, um, so there you go. Um, there now, okay. So status checks, this is, this is that other thing. So status checks, I think this is where, um, this looks like an extensibility point where we can go actually, we can go do a lot of different things. And if that status comes back as okay, then we're good. So th this seems like an extension point where we could hit a rest endpoint. And if it comes back with 200, okay, we proceed things like that. Um, so some definitely, uh, something that we could explore. Um, do you, do you status check in your Azure DevOps pipelines and your branch policy uh, protections? Let me know in the comments below. I'd, I'd love to hear scenarios where people use the status checks thing. Um, the ones that I use mostly is require a number of reviewers, check for linked work items, check for comment resolution, limit merge types, because you guys know that I love rebasing um, and I definitely hate squashing. Um, and then we have, uh, of course, automatic, automatically included reviewers is, is absolutely a must. So these are, uh, these are some of the policies that, uh, that I typically set. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I probably include them in my Terraform template, but, uh, yeah. So 
this is this is how we can take and expand our branch policy to control that pull request process to really ratchet it down to exactly what we need as an organization and it can all be done with terraform um, and this is this is something that once you templatize this using terraform you can pump out new new repositories and they're all configured this way and you never have to go in to your branch policy settings and change this stuff again because it's already been set up. I, I can't tell you how many how many clicks this has saved me. Um, so I hope you find this useful. If you did, please smash that like button and let me know. Also, let me know, you know if you guys use status checks, what you use for. I'd also love to hear what you think uh, you know, is, I'd also like to hear how you configure your branch policies. What, what types of branches do you use? Do you use a release branch? Do you use feature, um, do you use, do you use long lib branch like dev or staging, et cetera? Um, what kind of protections do you put on your branch? How could we, um, how, how could we enhance the Terraform project that I've set up to, to meet the needs of your, of your build pipelines? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear. Anyways, I hope you're enjoying the channel. If you are, please hit that subscribe button and ring that bell so you know when the next video drops. And until next time, this is the Azure Terraformer signing off. Mm -hmm.